Well, good evening and welcome to the Carolyn Holt Show. I am so happy that you joined me tonight because I love tonight's uh, topic. Um, we're going to be talking about your bad attitude is showing. And we don't want that to be your New Year's resolution to show your bad attitude. I, I always think that it's pretty uh, funny and interesting when people make these um I guess New Year's resolutions, um, they generally say they want to lose weight or get a new job or find a mate or something, but, but they never talk about um, making adjustments in their attitude, and um, I, I believe that some of them should certainly consider that as uh, part of their <laughs> New Year's resolution because um, attitudes are very important. And, and you don't want to uh, start the year off with a bad one. So tonight, we're, we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit because um, a good attitude can just help you to soar, whereas a bad attitude uh, creates a lot of misery. And we don't want that because our show is about moving from misery to magnificence and from subpar to spectacular. And that's what I want uh, everybody uh, to move to in the new year, uh, because there are a lot of miserable people in the world. Uh, by last count, I think it's about, what, seven billion people, and at least uh, four billion of, the, of those uh, people are miserable. So <laughs> we don't want to add to the numbers. But if you have thoughts or questions about um, bad attitudes, I'd love for you to call the show. The phone number is area code 323-293-3375. Again, that's area code 323-293-3375. Because we want you to uh, check your bad attitude at the door and if necessary, get yourself a tune-up because um, uh, I was told when I was a child that attitude affects your altitude. And I know that in this coming year, most of us want to soar to higher heights. And one way to do that is to improve our attitude. But I, I do recognize that um, some of the problems that come along with a bad attitude, we, we just don't know the process to fix. And uh, once we get some information and we understand ourselves a little better, it's, it's easier to at least work on our attitude. And um, I guess about two weeks ago, I was talking to a young lady and she was sharing with me about how her... Um, in her life, she had been hurt a lot. It, it was almost as if she had come uh, to have hurt as a major expectation. And as I listened to her talk, I, I felt so sorry for her. And, and I, I wanted to offer her something that I thought would ease her pain, but I, I recognized there was nothing that I could do the only person that could make any difference in her life was herself. And um, I, it, it just saddened me to, to, to listen to her because I, I recognize that there are a lot of people out there that deal with a lot of hurt and much of the hurt has, has turned to anger. And as I listened to her, I, I did say to her, you know, in, in all of this hurt, you know, consider um, fixing your heart because uh, in fixing your heart, you're, you're probably going to have to do some forgiving uh, when it comes to hurt. And, and most people say, oh, you know, that's easy to say to forgive people. And uh, I know um, a person who's still upset with the the survivors of the church in uh, North Carolina that were instantly able to forgive the young man for the killing of 
nine of their uh, congregation. Some of those people were able to forgive him instantly. And this person is like, I, I just don't understand. How is that possible? How could they, how could they do that? Um, and, and for some people, forgiveness is easy. And for others, it's not. But it doesn't mean because it's uh, difficult for you that you shouldn't be found doing it. And so uh, I was uh, doing some research about uh, forgiveness. And there's a, a lady that has a, I guess she's like, she does an online course about uh, forgiveness. And she asks some people, I think about 150 people, and, and I read what they had to say. And some of them had some very good um, advice about how to, how to forgive somebody when they have really hurt you and you harbor a lot of pain as a, as a result of the awful or horrible thing that they did to you. And so I'm, I'm going to read uh, some of these, but uh, first I'm going to uh, read what Mahatma Gandhi had to say um, about forgiveness. And he said that the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. And I, and I thought about that. And when I think about forgiveness, I, I think weak people and strong people can forgive. But you do have to work at it. It's, it's just not... Um, easy for most people. Now, uh, many Christians say that they can forgive because, you know, they've been taught uh, by, the, by the Bible in terms of what it says about forgiveness. But uh, these are just kind of regular and ordinary people with no uh, particular faith. So uh, those are the people that uh, I, I'm going to attempt to offer up a, a process for because uh, if you don't have any faith, it's, it's, it's hard to do um, many things that are in your best uh, interest. But some of these ordinary people in this uh, online course, I, 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 I think they had something useful and valuable and wonderful to say about forgiveness because, like I said, when you're hurt, it can be very hard to forgive. Um, and one of them said, Forgive not for them, but for yourself. Now, I like that because you, you take the focus off of uh, the person that has hurt you and caused you a lot of upset, and, and you put it on yourself. So I, I like that. Um, another person said, don't keep thinking about the bad thing that happened. And I guess that's true because uh, the more you think about something, uh, the more anger comes. I, I think it, you move from hurt um, to anger, and, and that's not um, good either. Um, another person said, it takes less energy to love and forgive than it does to stay angry and hold a grudge. Well, boy, do I know that one because as a child, I believed strongly in holding grudges. And when I went to college, um, I remember that there was an incident that happened that really angered me. And I stood out uh, at the door of the person that had uh, caused anger, had caused my anger, I, I stood outside their door. And as they, it was more than one person involved. And as they came out of their room, I, I hit them in the head with a broom. <laughs> now, I'm not proud of that fact. But after I did that, it, the, the, the action that I took, it, it, it hurt me more than it hurt them. Because first of all, they were shocked and surprised about my reaction and that I resorted to uh, physical violence because I, that's just not the kind of person I am. I, I, I really don't like fighting and arguing, even though I can. 
And many people will say that I do a lot of arguing. Well, I don't. I do a lot of discussing. They call it arguing because they don't want to hear what I have to say. But I did realize in that moment that if I really wanted to move forward in this world, I needed to stop holding grudges against people. And you know what? I did stop. And today I feel so much better that I don't hold grudges. But it's so funny because uh, many times now things will happen and the, the thought of the grudge, grudge uh, will come back and I realize, well, I don't, I don't want that feeling ever again. Because even though you pay people back, it just does not feel as wonderful as perhaps you think uh, that it might. Um, another person says that forgiveness comes, becomes easier with the passing of time. And I would say that that's true, especially if you have um, replaced that hurt with something uh, positive in your life. If you're doing something that you really enjoy or you have a wonderful person or a wonderful family that you've created, I, I would say that that's certainly uh, true. Another person said, don't force forgiveness. Some people can do it immediately and others can't. And as I said, uh, a great example of that was at that church in um, North Carolina. Uh, or was it South Carolina? I'm not sure. It was in, at, in one of the Carolinas that some of those uh, people of that congregation, they were able to forgive the shooter immediately and and move on with their lives. Um, this one I really, really like. Uh, this person said, you should write a brutally honest, emotionally raw letter telling them how much they hurt you and then tear it up. Now, I like that because you get to be really honest with your feelings you don't have to hold anything back. Read that letter and then tear it up because you've gotten it out. You've expressed uh, the dark side of however you might be feeling. And you don't always have to pass that on. So I really like that, that, you know, make your feelings known, but just tear the letter up. And the uh, last person said, um, it's easier to forgive if you remember a time when you were forgiven. Now think about that because uh, most of us have done things that we've had to be forgiven for. And so we, if we ask for forgiveness, we desperately wanted uh, the person to forgive us. So that is something to keep in mind. Treat others uh, as you would like to be treated. So if you've ever had to be forgiven for something in your life, just remember that when it, com uh, when it comes your turn to be the person um, to forgive. Now, I, I have more um, thoughts and ideas about this, and um, I'm going to take a break in a moment, and um, I, I want to share some other thoughts about fixing your bad attitude because it's not easy. But it, as far as I am concerned, it's a very important component to include in your New Year's resolution. So um, I, I'm going to go to break, but stay with me because when I come back, we're going to talk more about how to fix your bad attitude. Are you looking for an opportunity to earn big money? Math Maze USA is looking for people to train as outside sales consultants. You'll be calling on public and private schools, boys and girls clubs, and the U.S. military. If you're between the age of 18 and 35, a high school graduate with an outgoing personality and great communication skills, we want to hear from you. We offer complete training and great compensation. Call Mr. Glimpf today at 310-753-8830. That's 310-753-8830. Call today.
Well, I love that. You, you think uh, Patti LaBelle has a new attitude? <laughs> I think so. And, and that's what it's about. You have to develop a, a, new ha a new attitude if you're going to keep your New Year's resolution. I, I don't care what aspect of your life that you're trying to get together, your attitude toward that will uh, definitely make a difference. Now, before we went to break, I was talking about uh, forgiveness. And for the sake of this show, the working definition that, that we are going to use for forgiveness is that um, it's, um, it's defined as a, a, a way to stop feeling anger toward uh, someone who's done something wrong to you. That's the working definition that we're using for the show, to stop feeling anger toward someone who has done something wrong to you. Um, and I know for many of us, it is very difficult to, to get to that point. But another way to adjust your bad attitude is learn how to live up to your word. Now, I have discovered that for many people, um, their word means absolutely nothing, and it doesn't seem to bother them that it doesn't. Now, I don't know how, how, how they square that, but for me, uh, a person's word is, is everything, as the, the word is, word is bond. Well, I, I believe that's true. And living up to your word does not mean that you just tell people something in the moment so that you can get past that moment and then go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. Um, often people say, oh, yes, you know, I'm going to call you at 3 o'clock. Um, and often when, when people are starting to get to know each other, um, the girl or the guy will say, you know, give me your number. I'll call you knowing that they have absolutely um, no intention of doing so. Well, to me, that's just a waste of the person's time. So don't get them all jazzed thinking that they're going to hear from you when you know in your heart that you're never going to call them. But um, when, when men ask for my telephone number, I never give it to them. I always say, well, give me your number and I'll call you. And if they give me their number, I do call them because I'm a woman of my word. And I think that uh, in, in terms of improving our attitude, uh, being a person of your word means something. It, it's, uh, it's important to, to follow through on whatever it is that you say you're going to do. If you're a parent and you're raising children and you promise them something good or bad, whatever it is, make sure that you follow through because consistency of your word is, is very important, especially to the people that, that you're interacting with. So uh, follow through and, and live up to your word. It's a, it's a very good thing to practice. And if, if you are a person that harbors a lot of anger as a result of a lot of hurt in your life, my suggestion is this, um, it, is, it is always good to see a professional. You know, a, a, lot, a lot of people struggle with going to therapy and um, working on themselves. And there, there are a lot of angry people out there. And, and my suggestion is you, you don't have to handle that by yourself. There are a lot of... Um, anger management courses and um, anger man uh, management classes that can really help you. And there are people out there that know how to help you to manage your anger. Don't <laughs> wear it like it's a badge of honor. If you're an angry person and you know who you are, get some help with that. Um, because, it, you know, it also helps um, your overall appearance when you get rid of anger, uh, it's, a, it's amazing uh, the warmth uh, that, can, that can show itself 
when you're no longer harboring a, a lot of anger and uh, resentment. So if, if you know that you have an issue in that area, don't ignore that aspect about yourself. Get some help with it. it it's okay. I, I give you full permission to, to handle your anger because, like I said, um, we don't want that um, bad attitude of yours to keep showing itself. Uh, an, another um, process that I'd, I'd like for you to consider, it's, it's from the Bible. Now, I, in, in terms of faith, I happen to be Christian, and I have, happen to have a lot of faith in what, what Scripture and the Word of God says. And in the book of Romans, uh, the 12th chapter and the second verse, it, it deals with something that I, I think that we probably read, but we don't really pay much attention to. Um, in the book of Romans, in uh, the 12th chapter and the second verse, it says, um, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, if you are Christian, you have to learn to live up to the tenets of your faith. Because if you don't, then unfortunately, people won't be able to identify you uh, by who you say that you are. And for me, in terms of uh, adjusting one's attitude, the mind is the main event. If you don't ever change your mind, then nothing will ever change. So changing your mind is a key component to fixing your bad attitude. Um, I've never met or talked to or heard anybody say, that they've uh, improved themselves without changing uh, their minds about a lot of things. Um, I know as we, grow, hopefully, as we grow as people, that the mindset that we had in our 20s and 30s, by the time we get to be 50 and 60 and 70, hopefully we're not still thinking the same way. Um, so it's very important uh, to change your mind about things in a positive way. Uh, because that's the, that's the only way to, to really measure uh, growth. So changing your mind and growing is paramount and, and key. Um, another good thing that I think is uh, necessary to fix your bad attitude is learn how to think before you speak. Because once things are out there and you've said something hurtful, there's no real way to take it back. Uh, my mother used to always uh, tell us, you know, there's a reason that you have two ears and one tongue. And I used to wonder, now why, why does she say that? Well, because the, the tongue can get us into a lot of trouble. And I don't know uh, about you, but I've met people who just talk incessantly. And I, and I always say when they do that, that they're not tracking. Because um, if, if you take time to kind of listen to um, what it is that, that you're saying, just, just take a half second before you really let another person have it. And think about what it is that you want to say. Um, it, it, can, it can save you a world of trouble and a lifetime of pain. Because like I said, sometimes if you speak before you think, you can really say some damaging things that no matter how you apologize, it, you still can't take it back. It's out there. It's, it's like sneezing or coughing. Once it's out there, you can't take it back. So it's the same thing about speaking. So always just take a beat. And especially if you're, you're not about to say something um, nice, 
to a person. Now, I know that cursing people out is like what people do these days. Everybody has their uh, world famous um, curse words, I guess, that they like to use. And, and, and for those people, you know, I, I understand. It's not something I do, but I understand that you need this to, um, I guess, express yourself and, and get things off your chest. I, I, I get that. But uh, it's amazing. Kindness can go a really long way. So uh, many times there's a way to tell people off without ever saying a bad word. Now, I know that there are people out there that says, well, that takes too long. I can use some um, curse words and they'll get the message immediately. And that's true because I, I don't know any person that has never uh, not been affected by curse words. So I know that that's why people use them because they are very effective in making the point. But uh, my suggestion is that if you have to curse uh, the people that you know out a lot, perhaps you need to introduce yourself to some new people that uh, you don't have to curse them out. Because it, it's, I would think it's tiring <laughs> to uh, consistently have to uh, curse people that's in your circle that you see on a, on a regular basis. So just give that some thought. Learn how to think. Uh, before you speak. And and if you'd like to speak to me and um, add something to this conversation, I would appreciate that. It's the Carolyn Holt Show, and you can call area code 323-293-3375 if you'd like to participate in tonight's conversation. Because um, as I said at the very beginning of the show, people make these um New Year's resolutions every year about uh, things in their lives that they want to change for the better, but somehow they manage to leave off improving their attitude. And I don't want that to be you this year. I, I, I want you to work on having a, a great attitude. Uh, it, it'll make you feel better. Um, the, the other uh, aspect of improving your attitude uh, I'd like to offer is have meaningful conversations with people. Um, it, it is nice to just talk to people because I've learned just by having uh, meaningful conversations, it's, it's amazing what you can learn uh, because often uh, there are nuggets that people will give you that you're not going to find in a book. Uh, other people who have used these nuggets, they're just not going to tell you in general conversation. But if you have a meaningful conversation uh, with a person, uh, often they can just uh, give you insight into things that you've always wanted to know about but didn't know who to ask. Um, an example of that is I was uh, visiting with a friend, and um, uh, my friend uh, Helen, and her neighbor happened to come by because he, she needed her light bulb uh, changed in, in, in the back. Uh, she has like this uh, security feature, but it needed a, a bulb. And so we were just standing in her hallway having a, a general conversation about houses. And her neighbor, um, I was telling him about the housing market here in Los Angeles and how I think that the price of homes is just a regular house is just astronomical. And I, d I just didn't understand. I said, now, a, lo a lot of people must be extremely wealthy uh, in Los Angeles, and they're not sharing the fact that they're extremely wealthy, nor are they sharing their money, because I, I can't believe the price that they ask for these houses that are just pretty regular for the most part. And so he was telling me, that um, one way that the people might be accomplishing getting these uh, houses is that they've been uh, previous homeowners and they've never taken the equity out of um, their all of their previous homes. So they've built up a lot of uh, equity 
over you know a certain period of time and they can use their equity they don't have to have the cash or the credit or whatever to buy these homes you know they they have something of value and i thought about that i was got I, I was like oh my god i never thought about that i do know that people use equity but many times they use it to like fix up a place that they're in they don't always just let it um accumulate so that they can buy um buy better so to speak and and as he was talking i was like oh my god you know it's amazing how people just don't give you that little piece of information. And he was saying, you know, you're right. If, if you don't just happen to have a conversation, strike up a conversation with some, someone, these are just things that you may or may never find out about. So um, I've committed myself from now on when I'm having conversation, it's going to be meaningful. And I'm going to try to give out information that can be valuable and uh, support someone in some endeavor or whatever it is that they might want to do. But I just thought it was very um, kind of him to share how he had bought many fabulous houses in his lifetime. And, and he had reached the point to where he said, you know, uh, I don't live in L.A. anymore, but I can buy a house anywhere that I want to. I've chosen to downsize at this point in my life, but that's how I've been able to do it. So um, I just want to say, you know, it is it's it's very important to to listen um, to people in in general conversations that you might be having because they can um, inform you and share a lot of wisdom uh, in areas that perhaps you would never get this wisdom uh, in in any other way. So. So always um, try to engage in, in meaningful conversations and not just uh, foolish talk and threatening talk and, and talk that's probably not going to um, be of uh, much value to you. Um, there's a, a man online named uh, Todd Smith, and I think he's a, a blogger. He, he does a blog about uh, attitudes and Im improving uh, your attitude. And uh, Todd says that your attitude is a choice. 100%, uh, it's a 100% within your control. Uh, the choice will influence every aspect of your life. So start by looking at what's good in your life. Don't focus on the bad. Your attitude can be the catalyst for turning your life around for the good. Now, I think Todd is on to something. I, I, I really do. Um, and maybe if we started to look at our attitudes um, in a different light, we can then start to uh, work on them. Um, he says that learning from failure is important. Your success does not depend on how often you fail. It depends on how often you get up and try again. Now, I think that bears repeating that success is not about how many times you have failed. It's about how many times you get up and try again. Now, I know uh, you um, listeners out there who have children, um, I, I, I think you can understand that because if you've um, had a child and they're trying to learn to walk or learn to do something new, and um, especially when they're learning to walk and they kind of fall, that's the first thing you say, oh, okay, well, don't cry. I'm going to help you. Let's, let's get up and try this again. Um, and, and life or the adult is the same way. Learn how to bounce back from those failures because eventually you're going to figure out whatever the process is in it, that's going to be very valuable to you, and you'll be able uh, to move on. Um, on his um, blog, uh, Todd Smith, um, he writes, um, there's about, he says that there's about 36 ways to make a, a, a positive um, impression and adjustment uh, in terms of your attitude in about 10 seconds. Well, I, I didn't go over all 36 of them, but there were some that were um, pretty interesting. 
Um, one of the things that he says that can turn things around for you is to make it a point to say, I love you to the people in your home every single day. And, you know, that's true. I, I know people. I, I knew that I worked with a guy one time who didn't feel that he had any control um, in his house. And he was as meek as a lamb uh, at, at home. Um, and then the, the person that worked across from him mistreated everybody in his household. And I used to wonder, well, how does he get away with that? But the, the meek as a lamb person, he would come to work, though, and basically curse everybody out. So um, many times uh, people complain, oh, the people in my family, they get on my nerve and they make me sick. And, and that's probably true. I'm not saying that family members don't get on your nerve and that they don't make you sick. But um, it is important to to say to those people that, that you love them um, because you, you never know. You may not make it home. And if you don't, uh, so, so many times uh, people will say when they lose a loved one, you know, how I didn't get to say goodbye. Uh, there were some things I should have said. And, um, and you, you don't want that to happen. So treat the people uh, in your household nicely. Because uh, as my mother used to tell me all the time, that charity begins at home. So show some love to the people in your household, even if they do have a bad attitude. You don't want to have one with them, okay? <laughs> um, he also says, um, offer a friendly, authentic smile. A great smile radiates warmth and puts people at ease. And, and it makes people like you. Well, I don't know if it makes people like you, but I do know that he's right. It does radiate a lot of warmth, and it does put people at ease, and, and people feel that it's okay to at least approach you. Uh, so a, a, a great smile is, is a wonderful thing. Um, he says, make comfortable eye contact. Your eyes send messages like confidence, respect, and interest. And I know that's true. Um, eye contact is, is very important because if a person is kind of, you know, looking down and moving all around when they're talking to you, <laughs> uh, you don't feel very good talking to them. And they certainly don't uh, come across as um, interesting or confident or any of those things. Um, so, you know, learning to make eye contact is, is a, is a very positive, um, uh, attribute to have. Um, when, when talking to people, he suggests that in, in conversation, make sure you call the person's name. And the reason that he says that is because it's true. People love hearing their name. Uh, if you're talking to someone and you say, oh, would you do such and such and such? And, you know, they kind of don't respond. And then you say, oh, Carolyn, would you do such and such? Or Felicia, would you do such and such? You're more inclined to do it because you just like hearing your name. It's not because of any other reason. It just sounds good to hear your name. So when talking to people, say their name. And don't be uh, shy or afraid. This is, this is my interjection. Don't be shy or afraid about asking. Uh, you know, I know you told me what your name was, but I forgot. Would you be so kind as to tell me your name again? People are often very nice about telling you their name. So <laughs> I, I, I know I've uh, seen people and I recognized their face immediately, but their name just would not come to me. And uh, I had to learn to just speak up and say, you know, 
I recognize who you are, but I am sorry. I, I just forgot your name. Would you tell me your name? And many times they're very gracious and they say, oh, yeah, well, I'm such. A, and I'm going, oh, my God, I, I, I remember that. So just ask people. I, I know it's embarrassing, but just ask them. And, and generally they're very kind to um, tell you their name. Um, the other important thing to do is acknowledge people. If you really want to have people always have a positive interaction with you, be a person that's capable of acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is almost the same as calling their name. People just light up when they are acknowledged just for existing or because they've done something wonderful or because they've said something wonderful. Um, there's nothing like a, a, a pat on the back or a um, at a boy or at a girl, you know, to to let them know that I see you, because I think we all want to be seen, and I know we all want to be heard. So um, acknowledgement goes such a long way, and it lessens the amount of work that you have to do when you acknowledge people they um, gladly come to you and share uh, things with you. So uh, don't forget that. A a just on general principle, acknowledge people. Um, the other thing that really works is um, saying thank you and showing appreciation, even for the, the smallest thing. Um, thank you goes a long way because many times people just they'll say well give me such and such or do such and such and when you do it they never say thank you but thank you is 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 one of those words that can't be beat so um, learn to appreciate and say thank you and it is amazing um, what can happen um, on your behalf now if you'd like to add to uh, some of the things that uh, help to improve uh, attitudes, I'd love to hear from you. So you can call me at area code 323-293-3375. We have a little time left. I'm going to go to break, and when I come back, we're going to wrap up how to correct that bad attitude of yours. Okay? Stay with me. Are you looking for an opportunity to earn big money? MathMaze USA is looking for people to train as outside sales consultants. You'll be calling on public and private schools, boys and girls clubs, and the U.S. military. If you're between the age of 18 and 35, a high school graduate with an outgoing personality and great communication skills, we want to hear from you. We offer complete training and great compensation. Call Mr. Glimpf today at 310-753-8830. That's 310-753-8830. Call today. Well, uh, what was that, the Pointer Sisters? I'm so excited. Well, I am. <laughs> I am excited to be here with you tonight. I'm excited to be able to share with you about um, working on your bad attitude. Now, now, I know this, that anything that you decide that you want to change, it can be done. So uh, I don't, I don't want to hear you say, oh, Miss Carolyn, that sounds nice, but... It's hard to fix my bad attitude. Well, no, it's not if you get to work on it. So I'm um, attempting tonight to share with you some things that, that are tried and true, I guess, in terms of changing your attitude. Because if you really want to have the success that you believe that you're capable of in 2017, then... Change your attitude, and it can change your life for the better. I'm a, I'm a living witness to that, so trust me. <laughs> um, another way that you can work to change your um, attitude is um, offer up words of encouragement. Um, in, in the new year, people often start new businesses. They change jobs. Um, they fall in love. Um, some of the basics to life. And 
just to hear some encouraging words from family and friends that uh, you support them in their new endeavors and that you like whomever it is that they're dating and uh, you wish them well on their, their new job, you know, it feels good to, to hear words of encouragement. So uh, use words of encouragement liberally. Um, it's, uh, you, you, you just can't uh, beat that. Um, another way to fix your attitude is accept responsibility when you're wrong. Um, saying that you're wrong is a sign of good character to others. Now, unfortunately, I, I think this is a really hard one for a lot of people. A lot of people really do um, suffer from the, in the inability to say I'm wrong or I'm sorry. And for those people, often it, it's, it's to them a sign of weakness to say that you're wrong. But if you've lived any time and even inadvertently, you can be wrong. It doesn't mean that r the wrong is always intentional. You can be wrong inadvertently. You can say one thing when you actually meant something else. But, but be okay with saying, you know, I'm wrong or I'm sorry. Because if the person brings it to your attention, more than likely you are. Or, and if you're not, then it probably needs further clarification. So even if that's the, the situation, do that. Um, because just to argue the fact that you're not wrong when you are is a waste of time. So acknowledge being wrong. Always be kind and considerate. I know that that is just not uh, how some people live, but I'm suggesting uh, that it might be something that you might want to add to your repertoire. Um, make saying please a habit when asking for something. Now, I, I'm, this is, I'm a stickler about this because I think um, saying please goes a long way, and I think that as parents, this is something that, when children are very small, you should teach them. Teach little kids to say please and not be so demanding because children can be very demanding and be it's because they want what they want. And there's nothing wrong with wanting what you want, but please and thank you, these are niceties that just go a long way. So practice that, saying please and thank you. Um, <laughs> Now, now, this one is really good for when you're out in public. You should turn your head and cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough because you cannot take a sneeze or cough back. But I have been in public places where people just cough and sneeze and just don't think anything of it. They don't cover their mouth. And they don't say, excuse me, and they don't say, I'm sorry, or any of that. But I'm not quite sure how you do that and, <laughs> and not uh, cover your mouth, but I, I guess it's possible. But cover your mouth when you sneeze and cough, because especially in a big space, because you're infringing on others. And as the saying goes, your rights end where another begins, and another does not want to be coughed or sneezed on, okay? <laughs> um, now, this one I really like. Uh, it says that your attitude can improve immediately if you improve your body posture. Wow. Well, do you remember being in uh, elementary school and the teacher would say, well, sit up straight when you talk. Well, that's true. Sitting up straight when you talk and standing up straight gives off a very good signal about who you are and what you, what you look like to others. So your posture plays um, a major role in, in how people see you and how seriously they take you. Uh, if you're kind of slouching, and, and I know that people don't, take um, posture as seriously 
now as perhaps uh, as they once did? Because I, I think it's they look at it as you're kind of being a little stiff or whatever. But good posture, it can't be beaten. It's it's a it's a good thing to have good posture and standing straight and looking somebody confidently in the eye is um, is a good sign because it even if you if your attitude is bad, you won't come across as a bad person because of what you look like. So good posture is um, is very good to um, to keep in mind. And um, the next one, I guess, is a is a pet peeve of a lot of people. If if you're in a meeting or in a public situation, <laughs> um, don't take your phone if you don't have to. But if you must take your phone, turn it off because I guess there's nothing more distracted, uh, distracting to uh, some folks as in an in important meeting and the phone goes off. So if you take your phone, I guess that's okay, but don't spend the meeting looking at it all the time and make sure that you turn the volume off so that it does not um, distract others. So uh, I, I know we've covered a, a lot of ground tonight, but um, these are things to kind of keep in mind to jumpstart uh, your attitude uh, adjustment. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is um, respect. Um, Aretha, Frank, uh, Aretha Franklin wrote a song about uh, respect uh, many years ago, but the idea about respect has not changed. Um, it is something that most of us want to receive, but many times it's, it's difficult to be respectful. But if, if you really want to work on your attitude, re respect is one of those things. Um, things to uh, keep in mind because um, uh, Meryl Streep said something that I, I, I think is um, pretty telling about uh, respect. She said that disrespect invites disrespect. Uh, violence incites violence. When the powerful use their position to bully others, we all lose. Uh, now, she said that as a, a character in a, in a movie called uh, 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 Florence Foster Jenkins. But, but when you think about that, uh, there are a lot of disrespectful uh, people out there. Um, and they are going about it the wrong way to get respect. Uh, a lot of people think that respect is just automatic. But uh, respect is one of those things that uh, you have to earn. Um, people uh, don't like hearing that, but it's true. Uh, but you, you cannot go through life and not pay attention to respect. Respect is one of those very important uh, things to learn. And it, it never grows old. It's, it's something that's valuable year after year after year. So um, work on being a uh, respectful person because it, it'll, it'll take you a long way in life. And um, if you're trying to adjust your attitude, uh, being a respectful person will certainly jumpstart you in that area. Um, I, I know that I, th I think some of the young folk, they kind of have um, uh, a, a, a thought about uh, respect that um, is, that's not fully developed because they think that just because they show up, they deserve respect. Well, not, not if you're being disrespectful. So learn how to give what you want to receive and respect is is one of those things so keep that in mind as you move and uh, go about your business that uh, re respect goes a long way 
Um, I don't think you can have um, too much of it. And and I think a a telling aspect of that is our our current um, political climate and just the climate of the world right now. There seems to be a, a lot of um, disrespect and disrespectful uh, rhetoric out there. And I think we, we need to work on that and clean that up, even if our leader does not show that that has nothing to do with uh, each of us as an individual. So as you're out there moving around day to day, keep that in mind. Um, being respectful cannot hurt. It can only help. Because as I say every week on this show, it is our goal to help you to move from misery to magnificence and from subpar to spectacular. And one of the ways to do that is to be respectful. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Good night. Are you looking for an opportunity to earn big money? Math Maze USA is looking for people to train as outside sales consultants. You'll be calling on public and private schools, boys and girls clubs, and the U.S. military. If you're between the age of 18 and 35, a high school graduate with an outgoing personality and great communication skills, we want to hear from you. We offer complete training and great compensation. Call Mr. Glimpf today at 310-753-8830. That's 310-753-8830. Call today. Give me your 